morning, good morning, Trinity Presbyterian Church out of Montclair, New Jersey. Our uh, call to worship today comes from Psalm 136, verse 1 through 3. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast, steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the, to the God of gods, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his steadfast love endures forever. Amen. 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 Won't you join me this morning as we pray together? We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather in your name. With you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts, teach us the way we must go, and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful, do not let us, do not let us promote disorder. We instead ask that you order our steps. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. 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 Let us join together this morning for our opening selection, Oh, How I Love Jesus. American Hymn Note 291, sung by our own adult Trinity Presbyterian Choir. Uh, pastor was not able to be here uh, today. She is in 
Charlotte, North Carolina, at least that's the last we heard. Um, but weather related, uh, they decided not to fly and she got held over. So um, about 12 o'clock at night, she let us know this was happening and I guess I was on the text message, I guess, I'm, I'm it. <laughs> so I'm coming in. Uh, so we, thank you, so we here. Um, this is Pastor's sixth anniversary, we may have to postpone that. But uh, we certainly wish uh, Pastor well, so I want to thank you uh, for, for that. I know this is prize. Uh, I want to welcome our worshipers in person and, of course, on our conference line. Uh, I'd like to welcome you first-time visitors as well. And, uh, again, good to see you all. I feel privileged to be here. Um, they did not expect to be doing this right now, so uh, I appreciate your prayers and thoughts. And hopefully the Holy Spirit will be, be with me uh, this morning. Our announcements today are as follows. We have the Trinity Travelers are also host, or will host the annual summer trip to Charleston, South Carolina, and Savannah, Georgia. That will be August 14th through the 19th. Please plan to attend if you're interested. Uh, you can see any member of the Trinity Travelers Committee for pricing and more information. Uh, the parties will be due soon, so uh, you know we have this amazing trip committee. You can see her. She will be glad to uh, accommodate you. And uh, yes, very good. Uh, we also have the funeral. Uh, we have a funeral for um, our beloved Hazel Bray, uh, a longtime member of Trinity Presbyterian. Um, aunt of uh, Deacon Craig Williams. That will be tomorrow, uh, April 17th at 10 a.m. And that will be tomorrow, the funeral for uh, Hazel Bray. We have our weekly prayers or are held on Tuesday evenings at 7 and Thursday afternoons at 2 via conference call line. That number is 202-926-1179, access code 963-308-POUND. If you don't get that information, uh, Simone, Simone will show you how to get that information if you get a chance to get that. Uh, Bible study is Wednesdays at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Uh, also, you can get that information. Simone will also tell you about that. Um, we have a very exciting event happening uh, this week. Uh, our, our own member, Simone Campbell, uh, is having an art show in McGee Hall this month downstairs. Uh, the opening reception is on Friday, and that will be from 5.30 to 8. And she will also be here uh, Saturday from 1 to 6, as well as Sunday from 1 to 4. And uh, I wanted you to have uh, speak here from her directly. She, she will be hosting it. We're very proud of her. And I'd like her to say a few words about the event. She's right here. Thanks so long. And don't forget to mention the website. Good morning, Trinity. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So um, on this weekend, I'll be having an art show downstairs in Maggie Hall, and the art show is called It's a New Day, and I started this theme in 21 while we, are, while we were in our lockdown, and the whole idea of the, the whole theme speaks of um, hope and joy, and just or stepping into a new era. So it's very bright and very hopeful. And so that's mainly what the art show is about. The pieces are smaller pieces because I wanted it to be I wanted everybody to be able to get a piece of a piece of the art and not just do big large pieces. So it's it's mainly small pieces. And I hope that you guys will come Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Sunday is like after after service, right. you can't make it. So I hope you guys will come. And I'm also reminding you about the website. I, I want the website to be a hub for all the information. So I've been slowly but surely updating it. So so whatever announcements are made on Sunday, if for whatever reason you need to see what it is, you just go to the website. Yes, I have it here. So the website is Trinity Presbyterian NTC.com. And if that's too long, all you have to do is like type in Trinity Presbyterian Church Montclair and you'll see the page come up and underneath that where it has the address, you see website. So you can hit the website link if you remember it all of that is too much. I have a question. 
Yes. Uh, are we getting a Trini discount on the artwork? <laughs> <laughs> it's already discounted. <laughs> And I also want to thank um, Ms. Kim for her uh, effort and work on the website. She took it upon herself to um, to work with us, uh, and we, I really, really appreciate her support and doing that. And, and it looks really nice, and so we want to thank her for that. Thank you so much, Ms. Kim. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Looking forward to that offer. Very good. Over there. Yes. Yes. One quick. Uh, I available for Moses because of that incident. So if you know of anyone who would like to go, the ticket is, um, we have that extra ticket available. If, if you didn't make up your mind to go on the trip. Okay, so just to repeat, Ms. Maisie, um, Hodgson has to pay an extra ticket for Moses. Um, I actually have to happen to see that one, and that was, as far as I'm coming, that was the best show. Just like, I'm just saying. That was probably my first one, but that was the best show. So. If you're interested or know anyone interested, uh, please say, please see uh, Ms. Nancy Hodgson and we'll get those tickets to One ticket, only one ticket, and we'll get that ticket. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, we don't have any other tickets, right? That's sold out. So far, okay. it's not like those. There you go. Right for, for now. So, thank you for that. Um, so, these are our announcements. I hope that you would take note of them and govern yourselves accordingly. Now, time to pass the peace of Christ. We commemorate the words spoken by Jesus to his disciples. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. John 14, verse 27. So, here's what we do. We simply invite you to stand, make eye contact with someone in your presence, and you verbally exchange the words. May the peace of Christ be with you, and your response will be, and also with you. So I'll start it off. I'll start it off. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also oh, with you. you. And also with you. So 
we have uh, from in, in person on Tuesday, April 18th. Is this right? On Tuesday, April 18th, Greg and Deidre will be married. Anniversary. 25. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I said, that will be something. Are we married? Are we married? 25 years. <laughs>
more important to support our own spiritual growth. That's why we're here. Um, through prayer, prayer, through song, uh, with our talents, and our service. So those are ways that we give back uh, to our, our church. And again, we hope that that can lift up this us in, in the eyes of God. So just to review, you, uh, you guys know this already. Uh, you can give by leaving an offering and gifts and offering uh, mailbox, you can mail it. In the best of you, you can leave uh, your offering in, in the uh, offering plate. Of course, I said you can just mail your envelope as well and drop your envelope off in the church mailbox. Uh, Go right here. Uh, and then also you can just pay using the bill pay feature. And I'm sure Pastor would want me to say that uh, this Trinity Presbyterian in Montclair uh, <laughs> give a five. So it will get somewhere, but we want to get it here. We need the resources here. Um, so just want to just remind you of how you can give. And I, as I said before, it's not just about the financial um, part of it as well. Although that's important, you know, the lights and the heat and those things. Uh, you know, before you came in, we had some, you know, someone clean uh, the facility. Um, so it's important, but we also we also value your time and your effort and your, your work. And we have plenty of members here who, who do that. So we're, we're fortunate to have a lot of members who are uh, not only contributing financially, uh, to God's God's palace, so to speak, but uh, also giving their time and effort, we appreciate them as well. Know who you are, right, right Mason? <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, I don't have you know, you, you know the address. If you want to mail it, we can get the address to you. So you should be good there. All right. So uh, let us pray uh, regarding our giving. Lord, we want to thank you today for all your blessings, for all the the, the wonderful gifts that your congregation, uh, our family, has given us in the past, present, and future. We've been very fortunate throughout the, you know, the last few years uh, with the pandemic. Um, Elder Deming always tells us that we're very fortunate. Uh, that, you know, our members are very dedicated. And for that, I, I thank you. I ask that you uh, bless them equally is important. We also want to thank, thank uh, those that maybe that could not give and you know, maybe want to give more, but just was not able to. So we still bless them. But again, we want to just thank you for all your blessings um, that you are giving us, uh, whether it be uh, financial or health, our relationships. We, we, we definitely thank you for that. And we just want to bless uh, all, all those who gave today. And uh, it means a lot. It keeps us going and allows us to be here and share your word and share your ministry. So we just want to say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. So um, at this point, we're going to prepare our hearts again to receive the Word of God. Uh, we're going to hear another sermonic selection. Uh, this will be called The Lord is My Light. I'm sure most of you are familiar with that. Uh, 160 in our, our hymnal. And that will also be by our uh, adult choir. Do that up.
thank you, hallelujah. We shall not fear. I want to thank our adult, adult Trinity Choir again. Um, the voices, the worship um, means a lot. So thank you for preparing our hearts for the word this morning. Uh, won't you pray with me this morning? Thank you, O oh God. Lord, I pray that you would have your way in me. Lord, place your spirit in me. God, I pray that you would anoint me afresh. I thank you for the opportunity to share your words with your people. Open their hearts and minds, Lord Jesus. Perhaps you would open their ears so they hear your voice, not mine. Hear your words clearly, Lord, that they may be, they may learn and apply your teachings of our Savior. Lord, I ask you to anoint us with Holy Spirit today as I preach your scripture. May the words of my mouth and his meditation in my heart be pleasing in your sight. Lord, my rock and my redeemer. This God is my prayer in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Um, I got to tell you, um, I'm, I'm here because of God. I ain't going to just keep it straight up and tell you. Um, I did not plan to be here this morning. This morning. So I feel like you know, God is uh, talking through me. So whatever I say, I, I'm not taking no responsibility. It's <laughs> all so coming through. So uh, you know, with Joe from Brooklyn to be here. Um, so I'm just I'm blessed to be standing this podium. Uh, I didn't realize how hard this job is. So you have to give the pastor a raise. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. She make it look easy. She make it look easy. Uh, I'll be honest with you. All right, so our morning scripture uh, is coming from, uh, I, I had two, two sermons. I didn't know which one to pick, so I, they both are. I don't know, I may have a little time. So we're going to go with Isaiah 53, uh, verse 10 and 12. And that is Isaiah 53, verse 10 through 12. And I'll save the other one for, I'll just get through this one real quick and then I'll go to the next one. Right now, we're going to focus on Isaiah 53. All right, so I'll read that for you. Isaiah 53, verse 10 to 12. Two verses. Yet, it, yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Uh, I actually wanted to uh, review that verse. I wanted to just talk about that very briefly. Um, that is uh, what, you know, what we hold very dear, is the Lord is uh, basically being crucified. And uh, it, it's not an easy thing to, to, to understand. Um, uh, and that's you know part of the Easter and Resurrection of Friday. The Friday of it wasn't really a good Friday. Um, I'm just going to look at it from a different perspective, and I'm just going to talk to you. What father do you know would put their son through so much anguish? Um, not many fathers, not many uh, any mothers, for that matter. So some people may accuse God of being careless and silly, silly people, but they may accuse him of being careless and. Uh, being brutal. Uh, he sent his only begotten son to die on the cross. Uh, I haven't, I heard, you know, they've accused him of being a child abuser or because he, 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 he pleased him to crush the Lord and, and expose his son to difficult accusations, ridicule, hatred, uh, cruel death or betrayal, ignominy. I haven't looked down enough ignominy. Anybody know what that means? You have to have a doctorate degree to learn some of these words. And rejection. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's a lot to, to, to put your son under. So I'm going to get to the point. Um, 
but that manner of love the father demonstrated that he chose to subject the beloved son of his love to the cruel punishment that fallen man individually and sinful humanity collectively deserves. So I hope you understand that statement. Um, he did that for us. Uh, like I said, think about you, you have family, uh, would you give your kid up, not only die, but the, the manner of death that he, that he underwent. Uh, Judas betrayed him, Herod convicted him, false witnesses may accuse him, the chief priests and Jews may have condemned him to death. The crowd cried, crucify him and let his blood be upon us and on our children. And the soldiers may have mocked him, scourged him, lacerated his head with thorns and driven the nails into his innocent flesh. But no one had power over Christ except it was given from above. Amen. Amen. For it pleased the Lord to crush Christ Jesus, to put him to grief so that he would be the guilt offering, the sin offering, the blood sacrifice, the innocent Lamb of God, through whom man individually and humanity co collectively could be forgiveness, could have the forgiveness of their sins by faith. That's important, by faith. You guys can say this with me, I'm sure you all know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whosoever believes in his name would not perish, but have everlasting life. Yeah. 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 All you have to do is believe. Mm -hmm. yes. Look what he did. Yes. It pleased God to put him to death, and from his side was to flow his bride. Because through his blood was issued forth a multitude of believers as numberless as the sand on the seashore, and as numerous as the stars in the heavens. It pleased God to put him to death. So that his plans and purposes for men individually, that's you and I, yeah. humanity collectively and nature universally, could be redeemed by faith in Christ alone. Yes. He okay. did this so that in the ages to come, he might show forth the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kingdom kindness to us in Christ Jesus. So that all saints, individually and collectively, can join with the choirs of heaven to sing forth his praise mm -hmm. to the glory of God forevermore. Amen. So I just say this to say um, it's an amazing, uh, you call him God, you know, obviously, but it's just amazing what he did, his only son, and he put him through that type of uh, pain, okay? Uh, I think that says a lot, and it just says that what, what we should do as um, so what we should need to do as followers, and, and I knew I need to do that myself, but just think about what he did, and then see how you feel about that, all right? So, um, I'm going to go to another verse, and let me just go right quick. Thank you for listening, I appreciate that. Um, so, this is, this is what I find interesting. Um, there's only one sin that God won't forgive. I don't know if anybody knows what that sin is. He'll forgive a lot, but there's one sin he's not going to forgive, and that's the sin of unbelief. Because this whole thing is built on that, okay? And I'll talk more about that later on, but unbelief is the one unforgivable sin. God promised to forgive any sin if we go to him with a repentant heart. But you cannot go, however, to forgive the sin of unbelief. Because the unbelieving person will never go to God with a repentant heart. We need to be sure that our children and us as, as Christians fully understand how blessed we are to be given the gift of faith so that we can do, we can and do believe in our Savior, Jesus Christ. So the key is really just having faith. And I just wanted to uh, you know, point that out. Um, the next verse I wanted to read, and that was like the first sermon. Mean. The next verse I wanted to read comes from John 20. Uh, 19 through 31, and that's John 20, 19 through 21. New International Version. I got T and I in it. Okay. And the word reads as follows. On the evening of the first day of the week, 
when the disciples were together, when the doors locked for the fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And then Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Demas, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other, other disciples told him, we've seen Jesus. We've seen Jesus. We've seen the Lord. He said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger through the nails where and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Well, a week later, the disciples were in the house again. Thomas was with them. Well, the doors were locked. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, Mr. Thomas. Right there, right? Reach your hand on my side. There you go. Stop down and believe. Amen. This is the key one. Thomas said to him, My Lord, my God. He was convinced, apparently. This, then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Yeah. Another yeah. Man's faith. Again, going back to belief. And this is the time of the season. Jesus performed many other signs of presence with disciples, which are not recorded in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and by believing, you may have life in his name. So, if you don't recall, um, this is the one week after Easter. Okay. So we know that Good Friday, cru the crucifix crucifixion. Uh, we know Easter he rose. Uh, unfortunately, Thomas wasn't with Thomas wasn't with the boys. I don't know what Thomas is doing. All eleven all eleven was there. He wasn't there, so uh, we don't know what happened to Thomas. But we, we'll, we'll talk about that. So this is one week after as we, we still we stand here today, uh, the sixteenth. We are one week after. So here's the question. Um, how do we feel? How are you today? Exactly one week after Easter. Is the excitement of Easter still in you? Has it begun to fade? And you has it vanished altogether? I ask this question because in our text today, we find the disciples exactly one week after Easter, which we just discussed. Before dealing fully with how we feel, let's begin to understand how these disciples of Christ are doing one week after Easter. Our text of John gives us a quick glimpse back to Easter and a splendid revelation of God's glory. Okay, so, um, sorry about that. Okay, um, quick glimpse of Easter and a splendid revelation of God's glory, Christ's resurrection. That was Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Disciples huddled in fear behind locked doors. We talked about why. When Jesus appears to them, and when he does, he does not, he not only reveals his resurrection, he brings out an outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon him. So let's keep that in mind. I hope the Holy Spirit is in here today. Now, for some reason, Thomas was absent from the disciples. We don't know what happened to Thomas. He just wasn't there. He didn't get to see Jesus that night, so he didn't, he wasn't there Sunday, uh, Easter Sunday. Uh, the other disciples are sharing wonderful news with him. We've seen the Lord, but what proof do they bring? Only their words. John early in his gospel had already described Thomas as a courageous pessimist <laughs> and as an honest skeptic. So it's no surprise that his response is not going to believe it till I see it. And honestly, a lot of us are like that too. Let's, let's keep reading. This catches up to the heart of today's lesson. One week after Easter, the very same the very same room where Jesus appeared before, 11 disciples sit in excitement. However, I find it quite funny they're still being behind locked doors. They're behind locked doors. But yes, I imagine with them sitting in excitement and Thomas probably sitting, his arms crossed, you know, brow bur furrowed. I'm sure he had, probably had a look on his face like, I don't believe you guys. This is, this is the set stage set. The 11 disciples who know and waiting anxiously, one disciple who doubts, 
who only had the words of the other disciples to go by. He doubts. And I can't, you know, you can't blame him. Here, I want to pull back a bit. I think it's far too easy to kind of judge Thomas at this point. I think it's easy to make him a straw man, so to speak, or blow him over with the verse, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Um, silly Thomas, you know, uh, the modern Christians, call it a sermon and we can go home. So that's it. He's just silly and we'll just leave him right. He, he doesn't know what he's doing. But yet, here's what I want to express to you. If every one of us is honest with ourselves, we can see Thomas in us. Okay, um, Thomas is not the loneliest Christian ever, I'd venture to guess, and that every one of us at some point walk side by side with Thomas in the state of doubt. You know, we're still there. It is very, uh, it is a very nature of doubt, but, but we cannot see. We don't believe what we cannot see. It might as well be a sitting with the 11, arms crossed, ankles crossed, and brows furrowed. So the point is here is that there's a lot of Thomases in here. You know, I'm, I'm one of them. So this one, I just want to point out that, you know, this is something that we should, we should think about. Uh, part of human nature reminds me of the story I, I heard. Uh, you don't mind I tell you the story? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, it was a man, uh, he was out on a splendid nature walk. Looked at some beautiful cliffs and caverns. Uh, the walk, however, quickly turned less splendid. When the man, walking too close to the edge, found himself tumbling down the side of the cliffs. Mm. Luckily, the man grabbed a small tree limb that was growing out of the side of the cliff. That's the good news. The bad news is, and luckily he was too steep to climb up or down. He was too far, too high to jump, and he was likely the only person for miles. So what does he do? Well, having nothing to lose, he began to shout, Help! Help! Is anybody out there? Help! After a, while, a short while, he heard a, a response. Oh, my, my dad's old voice. Uh, this is good. I am here. Let go of the branch, and I will catch you. <laughs> man contemplated and responded. God? Don't you have a broke a ladder? God replied, put your faith in me, young man. Let go of the branch and I will catch you. The man contemplated yet again. After a long pause, he shouted, is anyone else out there? <laughs> All right. So, believing without seeing, Thomas doubted yes. And yet, which, which of us can claim to throw the first stone at him? I cannot. Which of us has never had the smallest bit of doubt? Perhaps we have looked to the trouble of the world, the pain, the injustice, the senseless violence, and have thought, how can God let bad things happen? I say that myself. Perhaps we have been challenged by competing beliefs of different religions, um, or perhaps we are like, just like Thomas and struggle to believe the words of others. Okay. We could have first-hand knowledge, we need to have first-hand knowledge of, uh, uh, for ourselves. Luckily for Thomas and for us, this is not the end of the text. Thomas is left sitting uh, doubting, not, not left sitting there doubting, I'm sorry. The text now turns to him with a wonderful message of grace. Jesus appears in the room, he came back with all 12 disciples, and he directly addresses Thomas. Jesus knew he doubted. Jesus knew he had been excluded from the special revelation that night uh, he appeared with the other eleven. Jesus even knew what the whole last week must have been like for Thomas. It's been a whole week past. He's, you know, he's, he's doubtful. Just plan for that moment. The only disciple left out. The only disciple with nothing but words to go by. The only disciple most like us today. Like us today. Like us today. And Thomas, the one left out, spent the entire week wrestling with his doubts. So he's, you know, Jesus understands that. Now Jesus does not lecture him, chastise him, or discipline him for doubting. Instead, Jesus wished him peace, and his mercy gave Thomas that which he needed to move beyond his doubt. Because again, Jesus did come. And he said, you know, you want to see? I got you. And here is the truly marvelous thing about this text. 
is at this moment that something new happens. All throughout the book of John, listen to this, Jesus is Lord to his disciples, to Mary Magdalene, to all his followers, and now, and only now, Thomas proclaims, my Lord and my God. He gets it. Not only does he get it, but he gets it in a deeper and much more profound way. Jesus, who was once just Lord, has now <coughs> become Lord and God. Like Thomas, our beloved, like Thomas, there are uh, times we will be challenged. We will doubt. The very best news of all is that God doesn't let us sit forever, arms crossed, ankles crossed, and brow furrowed. In our time of doubt, we will search, examine, question, and we can gain a stronger and deeper understanding of faith, of God, and our relationship with Him. One week after Easter, is where we are now, one short Easter, <coughs> in that crowded little room, door locked, sitting with other eleven, where do you sit? Do you sit with Thomas as one seeking? Do you sit with the eleven? You have know, a little stronger faith. Maybe you haven't experienced with a personal testimony with God. Still excited and buzzing. That would be you. Perhaps you sit on your own, neither excited nor doubting. Wherever you sit today, wherever you sit, I encourage you, encourage myself, to look at Thomas not as a bad example to be avoided, but rather as a representative in that room, as one who have other people's words and not first-hand experience. <coughs> And Jesus stands before us, inviting us to see the wounds and touch his side, so that we may know the truth and stand again with Thomas to say, my Lord and my God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you and love you for putting the word of the Lord Jesus to breathe for my sake and for all who trust in his name. Forgive those that misunderstand the depth of your love for each of us individually and collectively, knowing that without Christ as our guilt offering, we could not have been redeemed to, be, to become your children. Lord, we pray that you would bless us now as we leave this place, place but never your presence. <clears throat> Bless your gathering. Bless our pasture. Bring her back to us, resting, smiling, full of joy. We extend child mercies, O oh Lord. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And the people of God say, Amen. 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 Okay, if you are here and you believe the Lord is, you believe that Lord is God like Thomas, maybe you believe you are a sinner. Maybe the Holy Spirit is guiding you to become a Christian. We something called Pastor teaches as ABC: admit, believe, and confess. Uh, believe is a key key word here. You believe in Jesus died on the cross for your sins. I'll just explain that and confess of those sins. You ready to be a Christian? Um, you can come up here right now. We'll pray with you. Um, obviously, our spiritual leader is Pastor Wright. You can contact her. I'll, I'll go give you all that information. You can call her, email her. She's available. Uh, if you also you need a church home, uh, we invite you. Uh, our doors are open. We're a loving church. We have loving members. Uh, we care. Um, I take it personal. I'm a member of this church. And <laughs> so I would, I would say that. But if you don't believe me, you can try us out. So. All our friends on Facebook as well. We, 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 uh, our doors are open. We try to 
try to, we try to follow uh, the word of Christ and, and do our best. And I'm very proud of uh, my church family, and that's why we continue to be here. And I, I'll say again, um, the fact that I'm standing in front of you right now is not an accident. Um, I, you know, I'm not speaking from I'm not speaking from me. I'm just coming through. I don't know how that happened, but I'm going to be honest with you. It's coming right through me. The Holy Spirit. So, again, I just want to thank you. I just want to welcome you if you, if you chose to have a near church home. You are always welcome in Trinity Presbyterian Church in Montclair. All right, family. Uh, I want to read uh, our Apostles' Creed. Uh, we want to recite what we believe in. It's the Apostles' Creed. I know it's wrong. Okay, there we go. Um, Presbyterian hymnal, page 14. Right. Like a couple of pages here. So this kind of sums up uh, what we believe in. And uh, we're, we're, we're almost in. So I'll start out. Oh, you can stand. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it says right there. Invite you to stand. <laughs> <laughs>